Blessed Monday, everyone. I give thanks to God for each and every one of you. It's nice to be back with you on a, a cloudy Monday morning, but um, God has given us a new day and we are thankful for it. We gather in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I give thank. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son. You have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Once again, we will see if Monday allows us to work or not. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, O God, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Praise the blessed and holy Trinity, one God who gives us life, salvation, and resurrection. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship and praise. Be still and know that I am God. Well, today in our Places Along the Way Meditations on Our Journey in Faith, we are at Bethel, which is a place where Jacob was. Here is our picture. I don't know if you can see it today. It's a little darker. It's a stone stairwell with light at the end, kind of climbing towards the light. And our scripture lesson is Genesis chapter 28, verses 10 through 22. Jacob left Beersheba and went toward Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place. And he dreamed that there was a ladder set up on the earth, the top of it reaching to heaven, and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And the Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to you and to your offspring. And your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth. And you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And all families of the earth shall be blessed in you and in your offspring. Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, surely the Lord is in this place. And I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, how awesome is this place. This is none other than the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. So Jacob rose early in the morning and took his stone that he had put under his head and set it for a pillar and poured oil on the top of it. He called the place Bethel, but the name of the city was loose at the first. Then Jacob made a vow saying, if God will be with me, and will keep me in this way that I go and will give me bread to eat and clothing to wear so that I come again to my father's house in peace. Then the Lord shall be my God. And this stone, which I have set up for a pillar, shall be God's house. And of all that you give me, I will surely give you one-tenth of it. Okay, let's see what Martin and Mike and Marty have to say. So Jacob called the place Bethel, where there he said, this stone which I have set up for a pillar shall be God's house. Bethel, here we are, we modern, still following an ancient family, the family of Abraham and Sarah, the son Isaac and Isaac and Rebecca and son Jacob. We see our story in their story and find our place amid their places. So today Bethel, the house of God, is the name we still give to places where we hope to encounter God in the divine word, prayer, 
and worship, washing of baptism, the receiving of the bread and wine at the Lord's table. The first Bethel was the site of the famous dream in which Jacob, while on a journey, saw a ladder full of angels and heard the voice, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go. We know that God keeps us also now. Yet often in our Bethels and our own houses, we neglect the signs. So too for a time did Jacob. Surely the Lord is in this place, and I didn't know it. Jacob soon knew it. He gave us the example and then the vision to know that the Lord in the places of our walks and rest. When you come to us in your house and our house, Lord, help us recognize your presence and welcome your being with us. Amen. Yesterday, since I was worshiping at home via Facebook Live of our service at Creator, with my kiddos on either side of me and coffee in hand, Joaquin's like, it's so great to be able to have church here at home, which is interesting because several, you know, before August, from like what, April to August, we were having church literally in our home. <laughs> we were um, hosting the worship service in our house. Um, and he's been enjoying going back to church in the building, but there was something about sitting next to each other, cuddling one another and worshiping God together that was remarkable to him. I mean, it, it was as if he was Jacob saying, this is the house of God today. It's a beautiful thing to realize that God is with you, that God, it doesn't just hole up in the church and you visit him like you visit a, a member of your family. It's, and right now in times of COVID, it's wonderful that we don't have to mask up for God. We don't have to keep our six feet of distance. We don't have to wash our hands and worry about breathing in the presence of God. The people around us, we do. We have to worry about them and we have to worry for ourselves. But the house of God is one that isn't limited to one place. But we as, a lot of people have been saying that one thing that's been wonderful about the, about the COVID um, or that's come out of COVID, so I won't say anything's good about COVID, but that has come out of COVID is the understanding that God, the church is deployed. It is out in the world. It is um, not just in our buildings. And while I understand that sentiment, it's also a dangerous one in some ways. We are church when we gather in God's word, when two or three gather with God and receive God's promise, receive sacrament of baptism, receive communion. And in times such as these extraordinary times, it is enough to receive that preached word of this is for you. And God comes, it is, is full worship when we do that. It is not worship and it is not church if we don't do those things. If sure an arm of our church and an important part of who we are is that expressing of our faith out in the community. That's where we live out our vocations for our, our neighbors. And it is a secondary work of the church too, to, to care for and to go out and be the church deployed. And as in its members out there um, seeing and realizing and naming and walking with our, our neighbors and our friends and our communities and in the places that need attention and need to say, we need to say as the body of Christ, this matters, these people matter, this circumstance matters, and we are going to name it and lift it up and we will live into it. But as I said, it's a secondary work of the church. Um, that first one is having angels, if you will, angels are messengers of God coming to bring the word. That's the most important thing that we can do. 
it's the bread of life. It's the bread that fills our souls and gives us hope and life and sends us out then to live. Um, but it's essential. It's essential to be in God's house. The beauty of God's house, as we are hearing in this text from Bethel, is that, whoa, God is here too. And I'm not saying that God is not out in the world. God is everywhere. God is promised for us in the word and sacrament and worship. God is promised for us um, in those places where we are sent a preacher to give us life, to give us forgiveness, to give us hope, to connect us once again to God and to one another. That is where um, God wants to be found. We've talked about that a, a bit more for in these morning devotions and having it named as Jacob had it named for him allows us to see the world in a new way but we need to have it named for us he needed those angels to come back and forth and tell him what was happening and how God was there and present for him now Jacob needed that proclamation in order to see with new eyes where he was so the fact that we've been worshiping in our homes and in our sanctuary and we've been worshiping in these ways as well allows us to see once again that god comes god has met you in your home right now when we are being careful about how often we go out or what what kind of risk level because of our other circumstances in life that we need to take the house of the Lord is where we are because we are God's children and we know it is God's house and we are reminded of God's house the, when we are proclaiming that. Because Jacob, I mean, talk about generational need to, to share the truth of God with one another. You know, Jacob is you know, Abraham, Sarah, Isaac, Isaac, Rebecca, Jacob, Jacob Esau, of course, but Jacob is like the third generation from the patriarchs. And they've all had like theophanies where God has come and talked to them directly and given them children and gotten them out of hard situations. And yet Jacob's like, huh, God's here. I'm surprised. You'd think that they would get it. You'd think that they would, he would know and not need to be reminded. And yet here he is needing to be reminded. Here he is needing the word to come again, to say, God's house is where you are, and I'm sending you a messenger to share that word with you. So whether you are in the sanctuary or in your home, whether you are out on a walk, what makes it God's house is when the God, word of God comes as promised to you. When you open your mouth and tell somebody, God is with you. God is with us. When you say, may we pray with one another. When you say, I forgive you. And God forgives you too. When you break bread at your tables together and give grace and thanks to God. Those are all moments when God comes in. When we name the blessedness and the, the at-homeness of God in our midst when God has promised for us. So may you find your Bethels this week, find those places where God is at home and may you speak to them. May you say to those in your house or those in your life where God is active, where God is at home and bring that word so that you feel at home even in the midst of some crazy times but God comes into those times for us. Let us pray. Be still and know that I am God. You have been born anew through the living and abiding word of God. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Mighty God of mercy, we thank you for the resurrection dawn bringing the glory of our risen Lord who makes every day new. Especially we thank you for the sustaining goodness of your creation. Thank you for the rain and beautiful sunsets. Thank you for the 
the fall harvest that's coming in of our carrots and our gourds and the last flowers of the season. Thank you for the snow that is coming to some areas of the United States and for the show that Mount Rainier has been putting on lately as well with all those clouds up there and the snow falling for prairies that have turned red as the, the leaves turn. We give thanks that we know that as seasons move forward that you find your home with us, Lord, that you are in the midst of us, bringing us to your word, bringing us into your home and coming into our home and making it your own as well. For the new creation in Christ and all gifts of healing and forgiveness, we give you thanks. Continue to bless and keep us, heal our bodies, heal our lives, breathe your forgiveness and grace into all that we are and do. We ask for you to be with those who are suffering this day, those who are anxious, those who are isolated, those who have physical ailments and those who are grieving the another month half done not knowing how to celebrate or finding creative ways to celebrate those new creations of new possibilities we give thanks for you for you to be in those moments too for the gift of relationships with others we give thanks may you continue to be with us as we celebrate the milestones of life birthdays and anniversaries, endings and beginnings, and all in between. May you be in the midst of our relationship so that we can proclaim your word and your presence to one another. For the communion of faith in your church, we give thanks. Continue to bind us together and support. help us to support one another. Merciful God of might, renew this weary world, heal the hurts of all your children, and bring about your peace for all in Christ Jesus, the living Lord. Especially we pray for those who govern nations of the world. We pray for President Trump and Vice President Pence. We pray for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. We pray for our Congress and our judicial branch. We pray for Washington State and the election here, Governor Inslee and Lauren Culp, and all those who are serving now and all those who are on the ballot here in November. Bless and keep them, guide them, and may you provide justice. May you provide peace, Lord. May you provide the stability and the balance that we need these days. For people in countries ravaged by strife or warfare or a global pandemic, we pray. As World Health Organization gathers today and looks at the case numbers across the world, we give pause once again for just how many people have COVID-19 right now. For the uptick in the coming weeks, as weather changes, as people gather, as other challenges happen, we ask you to continue to help us find a way forward to promote the general welfare and health in all aspects of life. And as complicated as, as that is, Lord, we ask you for a way forward to balance the economic, the health, and the social needs the spiritual needs that we each have and how this virus has hit all of those in different ways we ask you to be with those places that are suffering in even more ways than just the pandemic of systemic un injustice that is already there for war that's already being ravaged for challenges that were inherently there before adding this pandemic you are our hope, Lord, and we ask for your presence and your guidance through this time. 
for all who's worked for peace and international harmony, we pray. May we be instruments of your peace, Lord. May we learn how to weave our harmony through others' melodies and vice versa to add to music and song and work together rather than to work in dissonance. For all who strive to save the earth from carelessness and destruction, we pray, continue to support us in supporting the world that you have given us. For the Church of Jesus Christ in every land, we give thanks. May you continue to support and, and be with Creator Lutheran Church so that we might thrive in our proclamation of the gospel and getting that word where it needs to go. And we ask you to be with all churches throughout our community and the world in that same mission that you have given us. Oh God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending by paths as yet untrodden through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless and preserve us this day. Amen.